Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework Extensions tutorial series. And this is tutorial one, build your first SharePoint Framework Extensions, also known as a Hello World Part 1. So we'll actually start from scratch and start creating our very first SharePoint Framework Extension designed to extend or modify the modern SharePoint experiences. And this is uh, January 2020 edition, and we're using SharePoint Framework 1.10 version with this. Um, so please note if you're using a newer version of SharePoint Framework, there might have been small adjustments and changes here and there. Uh, so please double check the documentation, which is always kept up to date on those kind of changes. Now let's actually dive right into it. So let me go to my Windows 10 environment. Uh, let's actually go and open up a console because we start by Yeoman Generator. Obviously you have to have installed already. The, uh, the tenant has to be ready to go and your development box has to be ready to go. Um, and I'm using basically the same environment um, which we used for the web part tutorials if you have watched them as well. Now let me go to see uh, and uh, code uh, where I actually have a few of the tutorials Tutorials, all tutorials already available, and this is just the location where I'm actually storing all of my solution instructions. And in here, let me go and create a new folder called App Extension, and let's actually go to that folder as well. And then we're going to execute the Yeoman Generator, your Microsoft Chat SharePoint, and that's going to start the Yeoman Generator flow. And in here, we're going to then choose to start creating extensions, but let's actually go through this one by one. So we're going to name and use the default value as app extension. We're going to target, uh, target SharePoint online as the environment. Uh, technically, uh, app extensions are also supported in SharePoint 2019. So you could potentially use the SharePoint 2019 onwards, um, but we're going to use the latest and greatest uh, SharePoint framework version and also the latest and greatest um, the underlying platform. So let's target SharePoint online here. We're going to use the current folder because we're already at the app extensions folder. We're not going to use uh, the automatic deployment option, which does uh, work and is, is available actually for the for the list, uh, sorry, sorry, for the SharePoint framework extensions as well. So you are able to, from a one centralized location, to deploy your SharePoint framework extensions to all of the sites immediately within your tenant, which is a super cool feature. But in this case, let's actually stick uh, to a slightly more simplified model. So we're not going to actually automate that deployment. So we're going to say no. And for the unique permissions, we're not going to do that. We are targeting extensions and we're going to create an application customizer. We can actually use the default values or select the default values. The application customizer name and the description technically is not visible anywhere within the UI, uh, but the name is being used as the name of the code file. So you might actually name things uh, accordingly or understandably, so you know what's, what the solution is actually all about or what the, the actual component is all about. But that now starts the Yeoman Generator creation flow. So we're downloading all of the needed assets from uh, online, the dependencies and all of that. And that's going to take a few minutes. So let's actually speed up the video when uh, to the moment when the scaffolding is fully completed. Good. And now the solution structure has been created. So let's, let's actually move into the Visual Studio code. So let me actually start that one. And we can actually, let's have a quick look on the Visual Studio Code structure. So I'm going to close the welcome page. Um, as you can see, obviously, the, the SharePoint framework structure and the solution structure is um, pretty much the same regardless how you're creating an extension or a web part. And one solution can obviously contain multiple web parts and multiple extensions as well, which actually is more a normal case in production usage rather than having every single thing as an isolated solution. Um, but again, depends on your design. But as you can see, um, the the structure is the same. We have the SharePoint folder. There's some new files in the SharePoint folder, which might be interesting. We'll get back on them uh, slightly later. And we also have um, the source folder and we have extensions rather than web parts subfolder there. And based on our provided values, then we created the application customizer in this folder. Now, like with the web parts, uh, the application customizer has a manifest file, which is defining the unique ID of the of the application customizer, and then also the alias component type and the extension type and the version information and all of that. And there's a few additional settings which you can actually control in here. The actual code is obviously a TypeScript file, and you can see that we are using the, the base application customizer base class to get started and doing modifications uh, on the extension. 
and if we if we have a look on more detailed what's actually happening here the basic application customizer is actually quite simple so whenever we are rendering stuff uh, we will get potentially uh, a read a test message property so we're able to have a properties in the application customizer instances as well so we're able to read that property and if property was actually sent then we'll execute that property if it's not set uh, we can actually say no properties were provided so you are able to parameterize the behavior of an application customizer or SharePoint framework extension in general. In this case, we are just throwing a dialog uh, with a message, hello from uh, the title, uh, and that title is actually a string value, which is coming as a, an example. So if we go to the localization, and in here, we can see actually that the title is being hello world application customizer. So we can pretty much expect what happens when we're running this in the actual site. Now, Debugging, however, with application customizers is slightly, slightly different. So, and that's because the uh, the local workbench uh, isn't really aware of the SharePoint framework extensions, and that's because the list view command sets or field customizers they would actually require a list behind of the scenes. So, and you cannot actually test either even application customizers in a local workbench. So what we're going to do is that we're going to modify uh, the solution to actually test out uh, and debug our experience in a live SharePoint site. And we can conf configure that or test that or configure that for this particular solution by going to the serve.json. And in here, we can actually see this pointer, which is saying, hey, whenever we are actually doing debug debug debugging, let's actually start this URL and let's start with these kind of messaging that URL so the debugging is as easy as possible. So obviously the condoso.sharepoint.com is not my tenant so let's actually go to my tenant and, and select the right page where I actually want to do some testing. So let me actually open up my browser and I'm going to actually use uh, sites.group as an example. It's a group associated team site as my test environment. Um, I can actually take that URL and technically load that as well. But what I actually want to do just in case, go to the site pages and take the full URL pointing to the home. Uh, let's close that one. So we get the full, full, full URL uh, without any, any confusion there uh, on what's actually happening. So let me go and then copy that and paste that as the value. Now, there are a few different uh, configuration options and, and with this additional details in our debugging uh, documentation, how to take advantage of this. So you can actually have multiple different uh, serve configurations. Uh, the default one is the one which will execute by default, but you're able to have additional settings as well. So if you want, you could have a slightly different URL here and then based on a command line commands, we're gonna actually load that one. So you're able to test different kinds of scenarios uh, using the same solution. But in this case, it's more than enough to actually update the default value uh, pointing to a right file. And there's our test message. Now let's actually test this one out uh, in practice. Let's go to our console. Let's clean up the, the console window. If whatever reason in the machine what you're using, you have not actually executed uh, trust dev cert, um, cert and please do that. In my case, that has already been executed in this machine, but hey, it doesn't matter to do it one more time. And that's making sure that when I'm actually running the local host, the actual local server serving my files kind of from the Visual Studio code, and there's no HTTP to HTTPS uh, reference uh, conflict, conflictions or conflicts. And so the loading works properly. So in my case, I already had that one executed and everything is, is up and running, but no harm executing that one more time, making sure that everything is fine. Now, since we updated the serve.json, everything has been saved. I can do now call up serve. And we actually start serving not from the local host. We start serving from the URL, which we get provided in the serve.json, given the values and configurations what we actually have here. 
So now if I go back in here, we can actually see that we started a new tab within that URL. And there's a, a, a warning basically saying allow debug scripts. And this is basically a warning if, if you wouldn't be the developer and you're doing something, there's a random URL given to you, you click that one just in case if you don't know what you're doing, do not load the scripts. But because we are developers and we know what we're doing, we're going to click load scripts. And there we go. We can actually see our application customizer being executed. It is now saying hello from hello world application customizer and test message. So the name came as the title of the customizer. So one more time. That was given as the title of the customizer, which is over here. And then we provided the message and the message was actually configured in the serve.json as a parameter, which we read in our code and then now we're presenting that information in a dialogue. So all good, everything works. Uh, we are able to start then modifying our extension to include additional things as well. But that's it for the tutorial uh, part one. So hello world tutorial part one. In the next tutorial, we'll continue actually extending this existing application customizer by taking advantage of a application placeholders. So specific elements on the page, which we can modify uh, and uh, change or inject our own extensibility on them. But that's in part two. So, and this was part one. So let's continue on the next video.